and get started. Call the meeting to order. And um, first off, any public comments? I'm assuming, no. Wait, second chair. Okay. And the next item, uh, approval of minutes. Anyone want to make a motion to approve? I'd like to approve. Any seconds? A second. Great. And all in favor? Okay, that passes. Next step, we're going to go through the reports and information items. You can show them. Oh, I've got those. Hey, Stacey. Yeah. Sure, she does. You have to order agenda. Oh, I'm going off the, the older one. Oh, yeah, because this was the new one that was redone. Yeah. Thanks, Tracy. Let me get the right one up. I was thinking to myself, I know the order rearranged, and that makes more sense now. Okay, here we go. Um, Okay, sorry y'all, we're gonna back up a little bit. Um, as you all can tell, right, it's doing a slightly different order of our agenda. Um, so, looks like everyone's present, Tracy. Not sure if you got that down. Approve the minutes. Uh, public invite to be heard, no comments. So now we're moving on to new business. Direct, or sorry, director's report and other reports at the end. There are three new business agenda items I put on here. I don't think any of them are gonna take a lot of time. Um, the first one is updating the bylaws and the first question i had jeff was do you know is there any guidance from the city on the process of what that looks like generally uh, when i've done this with other boards uh, boards give us comments on anything that they may want to have us revisit or to look at and then after that we send it to uh, legal and they make their comments and then we present it back to the board. Okay, thanks. All right, so thanks Tracy for sending me a copy of the most recent bylaws, uh, the 2016 ones. I took a brief look. I didn't bring anything to this meeting because I wanted to make sure I understood the process first. Um, it looks like there's just a few updates really that need to be done. So I, what I'll do is I will email everyone the current copy of the bylaws and then next meeting I'll come in with a few changes uh, myself what I see that needs to be done and I'll ask if it's all right uh, have Adriana um, if, Mark if you will also want to make any comments that you see bring those to next week's meeting and then we can just spend a little time in the meeting uh, making sure we're all on the same page going over those did you say next week's meeting? next month's okay. meeting Okay, do you know there's there were uh, copies of the bylaws sent to the other packet? There was. Oh, no, there, there was, was not. There. The bylaws were sent to everybody. Yeah, I have yeah. Oh, okay. So that Thanks. just will save you a step. Awesome. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Well, let's continue on the next meeting. If we can all come with any uh, suggested edits, um, we'll just combine those, give them to Jeff at next month's meeting. Does that work for everyone? What's the next steps on that? Okay. The other option would be to, to work with a Google Docs, but I know that can get a little yeah, iffy. Yeah, can't really with the do that. Yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. perfect. Okay, so then we'll just bring them all, bring any edits to next week. Okay. As y'all can tell, I've had a very long memory. <laughs> I'm getting things out of order, but I know we all have. I'm assuming we all have. Um, okay, so next agenda item that I was hoping to talk about. Agenda. Um, I was hoping to review the board's core functions, and I really pulled this from the city website directly. Um, and I'll pass this around. This is just a print off of that page, and I thought this would be a good time to do so because. 
I'm switching over to take the chair position, and we've also really been focused on the feasibility study and next steps with that. And that's feasibility study is finally wrapped. We're waiting for information from the city. Um, so the city shares the city website says that there are five primary functions. Uh, one, to prepare a long-range plan for library services, to review the library's annual budget requests, uh, consider all policy matters pertaining to the public library, and make recommendations to the city council, advise city council as to the expenditure of funds or securities devised or given to the board for library purposes. That one does not necessarily pertain right now. And prepare an annual written report to the city council. Um, so the two that really stood out to me um, were the budget one, as well as the annual report. And I know pre-COVID, um, we were doing that. And so I thought it would be a good time to pick that back up. Um, and also with budget requests coming up, or that process starting, I'm assuming that we're gonna wanna give advice to the city, um, hopefully in support of the budget request put forth by the library. And so I guess I'm interested Mark, if you have any information or, or knowledge surrounding how we've done annual reports in the past. And then, um, Jeff, I'd also be interested, if you, or Susie, if y'all have examples of how other boards are communicating to the city council. That's been a part that I'm, I'm somewhat unsure of. Um, I believe that we can send um, information or advice through our staff liaison, which I believe would be John. Um, or directly through me to the city, but I wasn't sure if other boards were approaching that differently. They they do it both those ways. In there are times where they make motions, and the council liaison carries that forward for them. Okay. I I think the and Susie, please um, jump in. When getting the information to all the council members, and I think what we do is send it to the clerk clerk would make it available and then everybody all the council members have the opportunity to see the same thing and then in this case Susie could re-emphasize some of those things mm -hmm. yeah I think with the museum board um, because I haven't served on parks and Rec or um, the golf um, I'm trying to think of other city city boards um, you know youth council I, I'm on that, but that's the structure is totally different. Uh, NGLA doesn't have a funding mechanism, um, but the library or the museum board. Sorry, I want to think pre-COVID when we got together, there was more of an active engagement as far as looking at the the budget and, and approving requests or, or making comment. I've not seen it lately with um, this board, and I think you know we're just kind of shifting out of COVID and into regular realm. So I'm hoping that as we move forward, that uh, you know they'll have more of a voice. I, I think this group is kind of ahead of what I've seen so far, as far as being really um, active and, and attentive to to budget and needs. So, so I'm historic, sure. historic. Um, our board has tried to do it several different ways with the city. And um, originally, when I first got on here, uh, the only thing that happened was that the, the library staff prepared a report. Uh, they presented it to the advisory board. If the advisory board was okay with it, they sent it on to the city council, staff, and council. And, and that was in council's packet of information mm -hmm. to review it yeah. they, they chose to review it um, somewhere along that continuum it was felt that there wasn't enough punch in, in the way that the message was being delivered to council because we weren't seeing any of the benefits of a lot of the initiatives that the library had going on um, reflected back in how the library was treated by the city. This is probably the beginning of this whole feasibility issue. And so as an alternative to that, um, we tried two different things. We tried uh, 
uh, physical presentations taking taking time on the agenda for council mm -hmm. and uh, one of us would go and talk and we would have a series of slides and we would talk about all the good things that the library was doing to to try and drive home that message uh, sometimes that worked sometimes it was just buried in the, the wash of information that was presented to council that you just had to think about and then another approach was to actually invite council for a pre-meeting of the library to hear hear some of the grievances and uh, opportunities that the, um, were in front of the library to present that personally to staff in the setting outside of the council meeting where we give more attention on that and i think that did work a little better because there were uh issues with uh, audio visual equipment and uh, wiring and you know, things like that that i think the city moved on and found monies and, and staff time to address and then um unfortunately when COVID hit then a lot of that stuff went away and you know with with the remote meetings and the um the tech the challenges of, of just managing the city in a remote fashion a lot of that stuff just fell apart um, a, a lot of the, the tasks that this group uh, was responsible for I, I would also want to jump in and, and along with the list of things that the uh, board should focus on somehow in all that we uh once this whole initiative with the um the city and, and how it's going to affect fund and tax the library gets resolved i think we ought to resurrect the process in the strategic plan because at that point you'll have an understanding of what your future might look like and um i've always thought it was overly difficult for the library to move forward if they didn't exactly know which direction they wanted to go and i think and i don't think the library really had was at fault for that i just think that's just the way things work so. i completely agree i don't think there's been a strategic plan for since 2018. Um, it sounds like she's having catherine are you having trouble hearing yeah I was with Mark up until he said we should revisit the process of something, but it dropped. And I shirt. noticed when he turned his head, that's when your ear, yeah. This could be angled, maybe. Yeah, <clears> a little bit. It's more. The mic is or it could be the speaker's problem. But yeah. anyway, <laughs> uh, the point I was making, um, Catherine, was that I think the board needs to revisit, and it sounds like the library is in agreement, re revisit once all the funding and tax initiative things have, have been resolved at least in terms of, of where the city thinks the library should go to put together a strategic plan because i don't know if we've ever had one while you were on the board and i don't know whether we ever had one when cynthia was on the board we used to do that and then we would be able to refer to that in our discussions on the budget and on our discussions with uh, you know what message will we communicate to council you know are we on track with the strategic plan this is what we agreed to do or are we in line with that and um, somehow that all uh, got lost in COVID. So, so i guess this is kind of like going into a couple of different directions that we need to follow up on um, to continue with the strategic plan piece is there currently a strategic plan even a, an older one for the library well it's the last one i found was written for a period i believe and i i'd have to check on this i think it went through 2018 right. and i just don't know you know i i, I would guess that the, the goals and everything that was established during that period even if they weren't met i don't know if it's relevant anymore mm -hmm. so i haven't really read it thoroughly but i can look back on it and see uh, but it, you know, in general, we need one. I mean, that was something I, I, I feel like I noticed early on. You know, I mean, in the interim, out of the full strategic plan, we can, you know, even kind of consider more of a of an action plan. I mean, it's still sort of the beginning of the year, 
and maybe establish, which could be sort of something along the lines of, of the tax initiative. I don't really know how that would look, but kind of just set some goals for the year, right. you know, so that the board's in line with that, staff are in line with that. I mean, some of them seem there with that initiative, but but a full, a, a real strategic plan is needed. All right. I think we'll have to ask for budget. Yeah, for that. For that. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> so that sounds like something that we need to be considering in how we advise council in terms of budget plans. Um, in terms of, John, what, you're, what we're talking about, an, an action plan, which would be quicker and easier, um, how could this group support that? I think, I mean, in a few, there's there's a few ways. I mean, I can speak to how I, I did it in the previous role. I mean, I, I started by speaking with my leadership team within the library and established some of those and then bringing it to the board um, and reviewing those and, and kind of seeing if they're really additions or any other contributions to the board or, or disagreements. Like, that's a really bad idea. You should take that off. Never happened. But it could. You know, so get, getting that, that true value from the board, which is advice on something like that and, and kind of some input on whether that seems like the right goals and direction. So you're saying that would be staff driven? That's how I've done it before. That doesn't mean that has to be, but that's what I'm familiar with. It could at least get us through this year until we see if we get funding for a, a full plan. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. I mean, like you say, I, they're fairly simple. I mean, I think we we established maybe three to five overall goals, and within there, some specifics, right, to help measure those things, and then, and actually, then at our monthly board meetings, I would report on that action plan every month and what did we do to meet any goal within here and you know not every month had every aspect but hopefully something within the month would do that so so it, it seems to me that um once once you understand where the city is going on your branch library initiative I mean, that would be one of your action items i would think but Beyond that, there's a whole host of other things that I think we talked about last time that, that you didn't think were in that overall tax initiative, like a storefront library, like upgrades for the main library, staffing, I would throw in programming, uh, a, a policy on programming, and, and those things I would would request would be in, as part of an action plan going forward. So. It, I'm sorry, it might be good for us to include as part of this um, conversation the budget update. John and I have had some initial conversations with the uh, uh, library uh, department heads in trying to hear kind of some of what they have in mind and some of the things that John and I and and do you have that list or I do you want to? Well, it's right here. Yeah, because I I've written some of it down too. Most so. of good stuff. Is. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so the regardless of what happens in November, we still have a goal of still doing a store storefront branch, right. which will be one of the things that we would request. We also want to request that all the programming that is currently funded by the friends. Be funded by the city. Um, we've talked about uh, the possibility of creating a fifth department within the library, which would uh, be outreach and putting more resources to be able to, to do that uh, in a rather than just Lillian doing that by herself, but being able to do more of a a formal process that we would also want to partner with the museum and recreation as a, a way to for our new department to be able to reach out in and rather than the library having to send out multiple staff all the time that maybe the museum could at one time send people out as well as recreation to 
kind of spread the wealth of what what all three of us uh, are doing. Um, we really uh, fill that uh, temp staff, uh, additional temp staff we would like to have funded. Um, often when we have staff that are sick or on vacation, um, there's a scurry of, of activity of trying to figure out how to backfill some of that uh, uh, coverage. And so we feel like having temps do that is important. John has a great idea about rolling shelving that would allow us to do some things in the children's area where which would possibly free up the, the meeting rooms a, a little bit. Um, we, we also, or at least I'm interested in doing some, some work with lighting in the library. So like it's way too dark in some places and John has actually started to get some pricing on that as well. Did, can you remember, did I forget? Th those are kind of the bigger items. Those are, those are some of the big ones. Um, that we covered but another one in there is a budget request for, that I also want is um, a, a pretty significant increase to our collection budget primarily in the form of digital collections where we're really far behind uh, in what we offer electronically we pretty much just have to be in ebooks and there's so much more content out there and you know for a city this size we should be offering a lot more um, and, and, and in general, the collection budget needs to go up a little bit, but part of that is to cover uh, the way we're starting to get collections in, which is which is pre-processed, so they're shelf ready, so we're, we're minimizing the time it takes to get something in and on the shelf right now. Sometimes it can take way too long because we're manually preparing those, but that has a cost, so the collection budget needs to go up in order to cover that cost, which is insignificant, but we, we need more. But the, the real increase would be in digital collections in my mind. And then we also talked about the strategic plan as well. We did talk about that, yep. Is there a question? I, I might have missed it if you said, but was staffing anything on your list there? Yes. Um, Jeff brought it up uh, in the form of outreach. So we, we have Lillian, who you may have met or know, and she's, she's a solo <laughs> yeah. operation who does way more than any one person can really do. And it's, it's really a, becoming a department in its own right. Um, and so we really need resources there. Also in our um, temp budget in order to have more flexibility for increased staffing as needed, whether it's from absences or we want to better support outreach or be at events, we have the capacity to staff that within our budget that right now is a real stretch. So th those are the two of some of the staffing um, that are right up front. Okay, thank you. Yeah. I think I heard parts of that, but I didn't catch it all. Sure. What about, this is a smaller piece, but what about professional development? Oh, that sounds, yeah. Okay. To me, that's a not a small piece. Uh, it's. I mean, it's just one of many areas, but there's just not enough there to truly support step up professional development at the level that I think it needs to be. I mean, you know, we're not going to send staff to every training and every conference possible, but right now, no one is going anywhere. Yeah. Wow. You don't send anyone to the ALA conferences? I don't think they're sending anyone to Cal. No. Well, we, we will be oh, this year, but and part of that was, you know, the COVID. You know, yeah. that messed a lot of that stuff up and you know they, they did some of that virtually and then I think some staff went but there's been a little bit of a hiatus um, from going but I already have staff expressing interest in Cal that's much easier to send people to I can do that within the, the budget I have at least for a few people but um, that's one of the best things to do that at least on a local level but some of those bigger shows ALA I, I, I'm a real advocate of PLA more so for a public library um, it, it's, it's extremely beneficial and it's only every other year mm -hmm. and you get a lot I feel like you get a lot of value for that and, and right now I don't know how I've sent anybody if it were this year but it so happens it's not till 2024 you should have a training budget but I 
offhand, I don't know uh, how much that there is, and I don't offhand remember either. But it's it's just it's not very much. No, for it's seventy not. employees. No, yeah. I think you know, in, in the case of like a, a, a PLA that's generally out of state, I could probably send one person, and I just think more than that should go to something like that. There's tremendous value in that. I'm a big fan of libraries having mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, professional development funding, so I'm so glad to hear. Oh, yeah. Oh. And then even just for some smaller trainings, too, that yeah. they may not have a high price tag, but if you can get more staff involved, and then at that level, you can really start including a lot of staff, mm -hmm. where everyone feels like they're getting the benefit of some type of development, you know, not just the professional staff. Agreed. And I would say that maybe as a byproduct of COVID, there's so much more that seems to be available virtually and sort of like a la carte um, around different topics and different aspects of, of libraries um, that for very, very low cost, I, I would agree that to make that accessible to staff would be, there's so much going on in libraries the country right now. I think that would be a priority yeah. to me. So just kind of going back to, to where we started this conversation, because I know we're jumping a little bit. Um, it sounds like strategic plan is in the budget. So of course we'll be hearing about that and come back to that later. Uh, I really yeah, we would like it to be in the next year's budget. Yeah. Oh, so just okay. to clarify. Yes, yes, yeah. yes, yeah. Okay. And um, I am used to running on a June through July year, or July through June year, so y'all are going to have to constantly remind me, I think, like a lot of us at this table, um, yeah. that we don't do that here. Uh, and But I also really like the, the, the idea of an action plan um, just for this year moving forward, uh, that pared down version you were talking about, John. Um, is that something that the rest of the board would be interested in? And John, is that something that you think you could you could bring to us? Uh, yeah, I would. I'll second that. And I think if you're if you're smart for ideas, which I don't think you are, um, you know, a lot of the things that that were put on the table were just items that were identified in the feasibility study. Right. It's like part of the shopping list of deficiencies in the yeah. feasibility. So just yeah, I Pick think it, it's not, I, to your point, that it's it doesn't have to be an exercise of something that takes months to where we don't have an action plan until like September. I mean, this can be done pretty quickly. I, I could write it right now myself, but I don't, I don't want to approach it that way. I want, I, I'm a big proponent of staff, like this is your action plan, you know, you tell me what your priorities are, I will have some. Budgeting, the budget is one of the simplest things on there that, and, and we've started that conversation. So it's like some of the goals I can come to you with and checked off, like, you know, so I think it's, I have no issue putting that together. Even, I, I, I probably could have some sense of a draft by next month. That'd be wonderful. Yeah. Thank you. Catherine, Brianna, any comments on that? Yeah, I did. I'd agree that'd be really helpful. Um, I think for putting together a shorter plan too, I've seen other organizations do either like a year in review or kind of do a past to develop the future kind of a technique to go about it. I agree with what John was saying about um, going to staff and getting their priorities as well. Um, I think that makes a lot of sense. So yeah, I think it'd be good to see a draft. So. I have a Sorry, my Google is talking. Um, yeah, my only other thought, I, I agree on those two friends also, but I just wonder if there's going to have to be like a little bit of a choose your own adventure model where, because there are some things in flux with regard to like, you know, how is the library going to be funded and is there going to be a storefront or another branch? Like, you know, obviously something can be done for this year, but looking forward, there's going to have to be something that encompasses different models for the future. And I'm just wondering if the board can be helpful with that or if some kind of like a retreat model half day or something like that would give us more time to help in any regard. I think, um, well, for some of those, in my mind, those might fit more in when we get into strategic planning. 
for in my mind for action plan like like for example something that might be in there is just something along of of what kind of programming we're providing and what kind of um, measurements we're trying to hit for that like let's say like we want to just it could be as simple as we want to increase our circulation this year you know so what are we going to do to do that and and that's you know it's something that takes staff effort and what are we doing or what are we that means what are we doing with our displays what are we doing to get people to check out more items it's it's very local but it's meaningful because it's it's library advocacy the more people use the library the better you know so it may not be like a large topic in the sense of buildings but i think some aspect maybe needs to be in there at least as far as you know if that day comes, are, 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 are we clear as staff and as a board of what could a storefront library contain? What would that look like? And that's worth an effort of maybe putting into an action plan. But like, I want to give that a little thought. Because if it gets too big, it gets, you know, you don't want to find yourself where you're just lost. Uh, I think letting John come back next month with something for from you all to react to and then if he missed the mark then we could maybe talk about the retreat but let's let's give him a chance to take a look at that and come back with something great all right thanks thanks john i thought you could have it to us by nine but <laughs> you need a whole month <laughs> <laughs> Sort of made it sound too easy. <laughs> okay. And then just circling back to the other core functions we discussed, at, to me the, the most pressing is really to make sure that we communicate uh, our support of these budget needs to council. And, and so I'm, I'm just curious, that, and uh, this could be the director's report, but can you just remind us, both of y'all, of the timing of the budget process? Yep. The CIP, the capital projects, kicked off last week. We have until the end of April to submit those. The budget uh, will kick off mid to late April, and we'll have until the end of May, usually, to make our requests. My suggestion would be that no later than May that you either send a letter or talk at public invited to be heard um, because once the the system gets shut down and and those that are working on the budget um, in fact I've had uh, other liaisons and other boards say that the council really doesn't get a lot of say until later in the process so the sooner you can start planting those seeds with council which then gives council the, oper the opportunity to direct the budget staff. I, I think you're, you're probably better off if you wait until July or August. I, I think you're too late for the 24 budget. Now. I would echo that because we've been played both ways on that. You know, we, there's been attempts to get in early and the, the, the conversation's been, well, that's too early. Mm -hmm. Talk to us later. And then when we try and address it later, it's too late. It's already yeah. baked that we can't make yeah. the change. And, and then we make the appeal to council and it's already a done deal. So whatever guidance I would say the city could offer this group in that regard would be super. And then you had mentioned the capital uh, plan. Will that be something the board can understand? I mean, will you have something next meeting since it's due at the end of april if it right now we don't have any proposals no proposed capital no. for uh, but and part of that is is with the 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 library the facility maintenance takes care of a lot of things that happen in in the library um, whether it's hvac or heating um, plumbing, electrical, all the carpeting, they all deal with. Um, what we would, it would be premature to do a, a branch library like we're going to an election for, um, but we could certainly talk about that, that we start putting that in now in case council chooses not to move forward with 
with that tomorrow night or that the ballot would happen to, to fail. That way it's already, at least we've started to let the budget folks and council know what, what our needs are gonna be. Yeah, I'm not sure where you stack the beans on some of these initiatives, but going back to the feasibility study, there were, well, first of all, the feasibility study was essentially absent capital requirements, so I understand why but that could be somewhat murky right now. But there were initiatives that I felt were, were in the feasibility plan that probably had a capital component to them. For instance, it expanded space for um, programs or initiatives or additional AD equipment. And I don't know if that comes in under your maintenance budget or that's a separate but I would ask you, if it's separate, I would ask you to start thinking yeah. along those lines. So one of the other things that the library has the opportunity is a, a capital a replacement program that's PBF 145. And it is all of what was community services and it replaces equipment that um, is, provides direct service to our patrons. So the TV in this room, the table in this room could be on that replacement list. John's, a new desk for John could not be on there. Sorry. Yeah. What about the rolling shelving? That, we have some money already for this year in that uh, CIP. What about items like the book sorter that kind of fell through the budgetary cracks for a couple of years? So for new items, we have to do separate requests. It, the, the capital um, project I just described is for replacement only. John in the operating budget can make re requests for large items like the sorter. Um, one of the other things he might be looking at for uh, this next year is um, trying to have a drop off on the west side. Um, if if uh, we can figure out a way to make that work, and that could be a, a general fund request. So, um, how do you count the beans for things like um, like the sorter versus something like? Um, reconfiguration, reconfiguring the rooms for expanded attendance of, of programs. Does, is that all capital or, or does it, if it doesn't make capital, is it lost to the process or do you pick it up under your general operating costs? It, it can be, so there's two ways. The, the, the capital projects are generally construction type of things. So if we wanted, I don't know if we could even do this with add a, another part of the building that would go out closer to the street, that would be a capital project. The purchase of equipment can be done as a replacement on the other CIP or as one-time requests in, in the general operating budget. So if, if John chose to do all new shelving in the library, he could, he could make that request as a one-time request in the operating budget. Did that answer your question? Well, yeah, yes, but it, it probably doesn't solve my ultimate goal here, which is, you know, I, I don't want to limit John's opportunities by my lack of creativity in giving examples. Right. But, you know, I think there's probably things that in the past would have never bubbled up right? because of the way the system worked in the past. Yeah. And if it's, if it's a more open channel to communicate those types of desires and initiatives, I would just say now's the time to put it in and just test that. And, yes, that process. and John and I have had some of those conversations that uh, I think we got the message pretty loud and clear from council last year that they didn't always know that we had requests. I think the mayor said that and 
they will know that we are making. I, I, I would hope you to prove we're yeah. wrong. Yeah. So we may not get it all, no. but it won't be. But if you don't say, if you don't say, you're definitely not going to get yeah, it. So. Exactly. So one clarifying question with this: um, as you mentioned, there's no proposed capital request. So is the BF one forty five? If I got that right, the capital replacement program is that a separate? No, no normal capital request, but there still may be requests for the for the replacement program. Right. Am I understanding correctly? The capital. So the PDF one forty five is a unique capital project because really what it's about is ongoing replacement, which is truly a general fund thing. Right. But because we as a department wasn't having a lot of success, even when we submitted our own budget, some of those items didn't uh, uh, fall high on our list, that this was an opportunity that um, the, the, the past city uh, manager allowed us to do because our facilities can't operate if we got crap yeah. and and so whether it's here at the library your your tables and chairs and, and all of that or at the rec center you know fitness equipment if if we can't replace those things we can't truly serve our customers I would encourage John to I think Historically, the library has only asked for thirty or forty thousand dollars a year. I think it would be good if that number got bumped up to seventy-five to a hundred thousand dollars a year. Recreation you know, has three and four hundred. Yeah, it's and, it's the personnel. Um, well, I, personnel can't go in there. I'm talking just the capital. Oh, the capital. Yeah. Sorry, sorry. Um, sorry. So okay. trying to get that up closer to a hundred thousand, I think that would be good. Recreation historically is. Over two hundred thousand museum is starting to ask for more, and you know what we as staff need to do is create what I would call a fixed asset list that would cover these items, so that for the next twenty years we know what we need to replace and generally how much life all of those uh, items have on them, so that. One of, one of the things that happens is it gets to be budget time and everybody's like, oh God, I gotta get things for my list. And if we spend time to do a better job of planning ahead, we'll have more success in the budget process. Uh, I, I think that's where this could be connected to, because that'll drive. Yeah. Certainly without capital. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. yeah. you, you're we looking at showcase ahead. that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. So let's move on because uh, we can come back to the budget again um, later. But is there any other comments for just discussing our primary functions as a board? I have a, a question and um, not knowing much about the history of that document. Um, well, I'm, I'm, I have notes, but yeah. Um, wondering about adding some more clarifying language to the, the, the verbs listed here. So like when I read this, the purpose of the library board is to prepare a long range plan, review, consider, um, especially with that first bullet. I know that we're not preparing a long range plan for library services in a vacuum, disconnected from staff and, um, and others. So, you know, whether it's adding um, assist or in conjunction with these entities or that we're partnering with these entities, supporting the library director or library staff in doing these things. I don't know if that I think would that's be. kind of implied. It I, is. I, I believe you said you got that since yeah, you got I the website. Yeah, I just pulled it directly. Yeah. And, and generally, if you look at all the boards, they are all written kind of that way, which right. at times make it very difficult for the board and for staff because we don't always understand where that line is. Mm. And what what I think would be good is that maybe you as a board, along with John and I, 
come up with an understanding of what that means to you, mm -hmm. which then can be a working document for us for years to come as the board changes over. Mm -hmm. That can be one of the things that in our kickoff meeting that we can share with uh, future board members and we're all have have the same thing because I bet if everybody really took the time to read that we might get five different board opinions on what that means right that's why yeah. I'm, I'm yeah. suggesting a little bit more clarity of yeah. what the, the board's role is yeah. in relation to the roles held by other entities because in addition for making it easier for the board members this is a public facing document right. and so the public it would be nice for the public to be able to have a clear understanding of where the board's purview ends, perhaps. And I agree with what you're saying. I, I don't know if it's just that easy to make changes okay. because... I thought we had it, an open opportunity to just... No, because judge. I think that that information actually comes from the city municipal code as a starting uh, point okay. and so it it's going to be harder to change that okay. then but that's why i said if we could come up with a working understanding mm -hmm. with within uh, our group here it at least we all are on the same page i, I really like the idea of a working internal document um especially as we onboard new members uh, what does everyone else think about that I don't see this as very. I don't see that as pressing, but maybe something that we can work on um, in, in bits over the next few months. Yeah, that could be helpful. And then um, this might just be kind of like expanding it a little too much, but I'd be curious if there's like one or two cities similar to ours, and seeing if there's any other responsibilities that like their equivalent of their city board library board is doing as well that we might also consider adding on. I know we'll still need to kind of come back up to speed with anything that was dropped during COVID, like the strategic plan or, um, but if we're considering additions, maybe we can kind of see what other folks are doing as well. Is that something you could check on, John, during one of your library director meetings? Yeah. Sure, yeah, okay. That's a great idea. If, great. If, if I could just throw in two cents on that. If, um, if you think back to what the purpose of the board is supposed to be, it's supposed to be advisory in nature, so we're supposed to communicate information to council that council doesn't have the time to find on their own or to, or to um, generate opinions that the council doesn't have the opportunity to pull together a, a, a consensus on. So as you approach those from from that perspective, I would just suggest that the overall product that's likely to come out of this committee is one of communication and advice. So to the degree that mm -hmm. these things support that initiative, I think I think you're on solid ground. Great, then I will start to we have a fair amount of like working documents that we've discussed already. So I'll start to add that as an agenda item, but uh, like I said, I think it's something that we can we can take um, more slowly, especially as we have two new members and we won't be onboarding for a little while. Um, Jim. Oh gosh, that's right, yeah. thanks, Eric. Um, okay. That was too big of a smile. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so just quickly, I just wanted to check. This is, thanks Tracy, this is the updated contact list for, for this group with our new members. Um, fortunately, I don't have, I can't show you all over Zoom, um, but I'll just, I'll email it, or, or Tracy, I don't know if that went out as well. Did I miss that one? I was in a packet, no, but I can share awesome. it. Awesome, if you don't mind sharing that, that'd be great. And then I guess, Catherine, um, or either of y'all have any corrections um, just to, let us know. Okay, take a look. Um, okay, well, let's move on then to old business and updates. Uh, I know we got a little bit at the very beginning of the meeting or before the meeting started, but uh, updates about the city initiative. I'm looking towards. Do you want to talk or hear and listen? Well, I mean, uh, as far as well as 
Okay. <laughs> Maybe you start. I, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so tomorrow night is is a big night, I think. Um, the survey results are going to be presented to council and at least staff hopes that council will give us direction on which projects, if all of them, some of them, or none of them, will move forward to be uh, further reviewed on whether to be placed on the ballot in uh, August for November. Uh, we're, we're hoping that that happens tomorrow night. Um, the survey results are now public and they are on the city website under the agenda management uh, system and yep you can see powerpoints and all of the survey results on on there um, i will share that of all of the items put on there uh, the library was the highest uh, in support at 60 percent um, and uh, again, there's a lot of good information, a lot of uh, good comments in there as well that could be pro or con depending on where you are in, in the public and, and these uh, potential projects. But it, if you have time tomorrow evening and uh, it's the last thing on the agenda, so I apologize for that, but um, if you have time to if you can't watch it live uh, by the end of the day, Wednesday, uh, you'll be able to go in and watch um, and, and see for yourself the, the conversation and ultimately what uh, council's direction was. So uh, I asked this of, of our staff, and I, I guess I'm, I'm probing. How would you guess this is going to go tomorrow? Our, our meeting? I yeah, guess, well, this, I, this topic, how do you think it will roll out? I mean, do you think council will make decisions tomorrow? Hey, Mark, when you lean back, we can't hear you. Oh. <laughs> right. Do you think council <laughs> yeah. will make decisions tomorrow on the direction of this, or do you think I, they'll want to think about it, or how do you I think thought the plan was, because, I mean, for me, I want to I want to hurry up and make a decision. I want to make sure that we get the you know all we the, hear all, all, the, all the communications. I want to make sure we get all the communications out there in a the timely manner. So I think for us to sit on it and think about it, it's not going to do you know it's not going to be in the best interest of getting um, this initiative passed. So you know I imagine that it will be a long meeting, a lot of questions dinner before <laughs> um, but I, I my feeling is that the majority of council if not all of council supports um, this passing so do you do you think I mean there's mm -hmm. the way the way the initiative or the way the survey was put together yeah each initiative had it was kind of like an encapsulation of what was suggested for that particular city service mm -hmm. and some were favored to a larger degree than others so do you think council will go down through those 10 or 12 initiatives and pick winners and losers or do you think they're going to say we're going to go for all of it or do you think um, there's not going to be enough information for you to put something together to take it to the ballot. I think the biggest, when I was looking at it, the biggest ones that were red flags to me was, uh, and I understand why Centennial Pool, I mean, that pool is is fractured. It cannot be upgraded. It's got to go. And, you know, just to hear that 28% of the people, participants, 28% of the participants who supported um, changing Centennial Pool facility to remove the pool and put in the basketball courts and fitness space, only 28% um, said that they would either definitely vote yes or probably vote yes. But 55% said no. So, you know, we kind of think about 
Okay, by adding some of these more, um, not controversial, but just, well, I guess they are controversial because people want to hang on to the Centennial Pools, knowing that there's a pool on the east side. Um, I think, you know, having <coughs> those tagged on, it could be a liability as far as the success of <coughs> passing the initiative. Um, the other one was Montgomery Park. And I think a lot of people didn't even know where that would be located. Or, where that, where that space is so um, there's a lot of less investment in those and I worry that because the, the according to the survey they're turned off by that they don't want to support that if we tack them on would it then uh, create a scenario where people just uh, and it doesn't mean that initiatives like Sentinel School don't get addressed it just wouldn't be part of this package yeah so, so, so the reason behind all those questions, yeah. other than just curiosity, was do you feel that the, the library's case is strong enough as it came in from the survey, or does somebody from the board need to speak at the public to be heard to make the case? I mean, I'm not going to tell you to, to don't worry about sure, it. Sure, but yeah. I don't, I don't I mean, think we want to... I don't yeah, think yeah, yeah. I don't no, think you want to drag out a long meeting. No, to make no, it but, longer. Um, no. Quite frankly, I'd rather hear from you than some of the other public comments we get. So, um, no, it's always nice to see here. You know, I'm sorry, we really can't hear Susie at all. Oh, it's not facing her. It's not facing me. Okay, so you know, I'm not going to discourage anyone from coming to council. I think uh, that's always a good idea to to share your perspective and and share what what's being discussed on the board as well and our priorities um, I just based on what I was reading in the in my packet the library of all the items that was the most favorable is you know I, I think the community really wants to support and fund adequately fund the library so I'm not worried that that would be one of the items that would be pulled off Okay, uh, I, I would, and I'm only speaking the centennial pool part, and no, you know, I, I understand. That's mine. I just, mine, I just yeah. want to say, just in case she yeah. had to step on. I just asked whether somebody from the board needed to talk tomorrow in support of the library. Uh, can I ask you a question real quick about the survey itself? I did take it, but I and I should have taken notes, but I don't remember. Was were any of the questions about the library worded that actually said it would be adequately funded? Because I don't remember that. I just remember talking about building branch libraries. Yeah, no. It, no, it, it was not anything. It was all about capital investment and new a new library or new facilities with the funding that would go along with it. Nothing to do with current funding levels. So, so there's nothing in this tax that would guarantee that either the existing library or any new branch library would be funded at any of the levels listed in the feasibility study that we want. No, it, uh, it, it, is, it is funded based on our estimates of what it would cost to open a branch library and operate it. Okay, so would council be aware then that that would still be another issue that would have to be resolved, even if this goes through? Or should, like, yes. Where do you think yes. It yes. <laughs> it is a concern. Yes. But again, that that was the budget thing we were just talking about, and we would uh, be bringing those items back to you in April mm -hmm. for you to give comment as we prepare for 2024. Two, two completely different things. But I, I think your perspective is right on because a half of the feasibility study is, is not addressed by this initiative. The, the upgrade of the main library, the, the storefront library staffing, the targeted funding, none of that is, is going to be part of, of the monies that are allocated if this initiative passes. Right, so my concern is if this initiative does pass, then we're left again to continue begging for money and people are going to say, well, we just gave you all this great stuff. But I, I just want to make sure that the conversation about how is it all going to continue to look continues, I guess. Mm -hmm. Which is, again, what the budget conversation we just had. Mm -hmm. 
trying to implement those things that were identified in the feasibility study, including the storefront branch. So I think yeah, I have, I'm not denying that. I think I'm just saying, like, I, show me the money, I guess, right? Like, the proof is in the pudding. We'll see if it actually happens. I would love that. That would be wonderful. But it has, we've done it a lot and it hasn't happened. So, so, so I, I guess that's, I, believe. I think that's something that we're going to want to really think, uh, refer back to the feasibility. I think it's something we're going to want to consider to refer back to the feasibility study when we do um, share our support for for the budget. Um, and I think that there are going to be a number of opportunities to share those concerns um, as long as we continue to bring them forward. Um, in terms of, of tomorrow night, uh, Mark, thanks for catching me up. Uh, what was the answer if it would be advantageous? I think council is always interested in okay. mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And then, Susie, do you have any idea? This may be an impossible question. If, if anyone, if I'm, I'd be able to stream part of the meeting tomorrow night. Do you have any idea when you think we should tune in? Oh, gosh. I'm looking at the agenda right okay. now. And it is the last, yeah. it's the last item. So... It, it you hard. know, and it also it's hard to gauge because in the event nobody pulls um, items, ordinances on first reading, then you know we just pass it all in bulk and and mm -hmm. move to the next section. If people pull out items, then that can carry on the conversation. Plus, the number of people talking under public invited public invited to be heard. To be heard. There have yes. been nights where gets to be nine o'clock I'm sure and there hasn't yeah. been any sure. business conducted yet. no yeah so I, I think given the nature of the importance of what you guys are going to talk about tomorrow night I could see that going away ways don't you yes yeah, yeah. Um, so I know for sure we won't it won't be eight o'clock but then watch I totally <laughs> yeah. yeah we're like halfway through the presentation at eight but I you know I I can kind of safely say that Eight o'clock. You know, if you tune in after eight, you should be okay. So, and so it, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I was just going to follow up with the question of would it be advantageous for someone from the board to be there? Uh, I am not able to. I, I know that right away. Um, but I don't know if anyone else would want to be. Uh, or, or the other thing is John and I will both be there mm -hmm. and the Wednesday morning we could send out an email that <laughs> summarized what what council decided mm -hmm. yeah you, you yeah, that's not adding too much that'd be wonderful yeah. Sorry, Mark, you say? well um, well I thought one of you guys should be there but maybe it's not the right timing on it given the budget initiative and I was wondering whether we should pass a resolution indicating that while we're um, happy that the city is, is starting to focus on the library's funding, that it's only part of the battle as we see it, and there also needs to be consideration for the funding for upgrades to the main library and for a storefront library as were identified in the feasibility study and then you just send that off to um, uh, I guess uh, Harold and the mayor and, and Susie and uh, the council. I am curious if this is if this would be an advantageous time to do that or if it would make more sense after that discussion and as we uh, learn more about the budget request for this year. Um, but I, I'm curious, Mark, what you think in response to that, and then what the rest of the board members think about this as well. And hopefully you all heard me. I do think there is a strategic aspect to what you're suggesting to pay very close attention to how the conversation plays out. Um, tomorrow night, what other uh, items are brought um, and, and seem like uh, exciting or sensitive issues and then you know we can figure out how to tailor 
our next communication accordingly. Because there's no decisions that are being made tomorrow in regard to the library, yes? Yeah, there, yes. There, well, there, there yeah. could be. There could be, it seems like. So, you didn't ask my opinion. Yes, but I'd be love to hear it. <laughs> so, there is a potential that tomorrow night, council could move to move the branch library forward. That's almost $23 million for the construction and another $3 million for um, operation. I think it would look bad if we then said, and that's not enough. I think your point, Mark, is important, but I don't think it should come tomorrow night because it isn't, it, with all due respect, it isn't council who you have to worry about. It's the public's gonna be hearing that too and, and they're gonna hear, my goodness, they just got that much and they're telling us it's not enough. So just just my two cents. I think it could come later. I think Cynthia has said, yeah, come, come after that. So it's clearly two separate things. Well, if it's my turn, I respect your sensitivity, and um, yeah, I could see that. I could, I could see that kind of reaction. Um, at the same time, I guess I found myself many times being behind the ball on on these initiatives, where you think you're you jump in at a certain time and you find out, well, that's too late. By the time you get there, it's events have already passed you by and then the opportunity to influence the discussion has um, has been lessened uh, i mean i understand the argument of waiting and, and being more strategic i guess in terms of the, the timing of this but i would just um from my perspective council the board you got to really stay on top of this because it's real easy for the city to move forward on this and you think you're okay and you're not okay I would agree. I think that in my short time of being involved with the library that the, the board has been very clear on what your goals are and what your interests are. And I think that when you see the full list in April at the meeting of what we're going to request, I think that gives you the ability to say and when you go to council and staff is asking for x y and z for the 24 budget and you can support that piece that way i think it it just is is a better look for voters we don't want to turn anybody off because even at 60 percent once you get your ballot you know that 60 percent may actually be some different number so we certainly don't want to do anything to burn a bridge again just my two cents so let me turn to our members on let me turn to our members on zoom uh, just to see if there are any comments that you all have and i think the main <coughs> discussion we're having is it would now be an appropriate time to, to weigh in as a board um <coughs> i'm my thought is to wait, um, but we also have some some other thoughts and, and reasoning why. And Mark, your resolution idea would just be to to put in front of council the idea, kind of that I was saying that like the, these other pieces of the puzzle still need to be taken into consideration simultaneous to this tax measure. Right, right, Catherine. I mean, I'm okay if if. You, the board wants to wait till after tomorrow's meeting and then decide whether they want to send a resolution or not. I just think there should be a, a communication of the sentiment of the group as to the general direction of where the funding for the library needs to go. No, that's why I brought it up. I 100% agree with you. And I'd be inclined to just say it too, because I don't think it's going to surprise anybody. <laughs> 
Yeah, I, I think when the other shoe drops, either when, when you put it in the budget or if it doesn't get highly identified at that point at some future point down the road, people are gonna say, hey, what gives? We just, you know, we just voted for this. Why are we being asked to pay for more? I mean, I think that's just natural. Yeah, my concern would be then they would say, well, we can't pay for that, right? We already paid for this other thing. I think it's, personally, I'd rather know up front what is the combined cost of actually running a high quality library. And yeah, do I want to pay for that or not? Versus, you know, oh, I agree the concept of the building and I don't even think about how to run it. I guess an example that I will use is a rec center is a new rec center is another item that's on there. Just because there's a new rec center on there doesn't mean recreation won't also ask for additional things as well. They're, they're two, in, in my world of looking at the budget, they're two different things. And we will push for the library just as hard for these items that are going in the, in the operating budget as we would for things in the election. I apologize if this is a rookie question, but is this like a, just a simple matter of somebody who is presenting to just say a sentence? Like, keep in mind what we're discussing now is separate, separate from any of the potential uh, requests and operating costs. I thought that that presentation of the uh, feasibility study was so informative there was so much information there that, you know, and of course not everybody saw, watched, or, or read that report, but you would have that. If you did, if you were at that meeting in November, you would have that memory and know like, yeah, this is not the whole picture. This is just one thing that we're talking about. But like, can somebody just say that? like? remind everyone listening like this is separate from operating I, I don't know I don't know Susie what, what your thoughts would be um, on, on that question so um, yeah so I guess we're talking about you know two separate so if somebody's coming to speak to you know please get this on the ballot you know we support the idea of a branch library and the funding being used for that but then it also sounds like there's another item which is the ongoing expenses for you know to to attain that preferred level of service and advocating for that as a change in our budget not necessarily an additional tax you know tax increase to make that happen um you know i my thought is that it might kind of convolute the two so if we're talking about two separate sources getting acquiring money from the city through the budgeting process, people might mistake it for what's supposed to be on the ballot. So that would be the only thing that I would be concerned about. Mm -hmm. But again, in public invited to be heard, it's you know what what you all decide to to, to move forward. All right. Um, I think we need to to wrap this one up and move on. Um, so I would like to propose that we hold off on making this statement. But if there is a majority of us as the board who disagrees with that, um, that, that doesn't have to be, you know, that can change. Um, so is everyone, would anyone like to make a strong case that we want to make some, one of us goes to public and ready to be heard tomorrow night? Or are you all okay after this discussion with uh, making sure that we have a strong communication once we have the full budget list and make sure to uh, include um, information about the preferred level of funding from the feasibility study then? I can wait. That's how you want to do it. Yeah, I'm not going to die on this cross, but I do think it's important that we get out there. I, I can't go tomorrow, so yeah. it's hard for me to push it. <laughs> All right. Uh, before we... Go ahead. You know, I was just going to say, you know, when you get... Um, you know, you there's a the window is pretty short yes. as far as when it opens and then when you have to submit your 
proposals. Um, is there a way that the board can acquire, you know, your list prior to having to finalize it so they can weigh in on it? Or? Well, it would be our hope that we can present that to the board in April so okay. that if you have other suggestions, we still have time in May to, mm -hmm. to make other requests. And then I think, you know, uh, the council meetings following those, that would be the time for you all to come in mm -hmm. before everything is closed. That feels so much more like a natural flow uh -huh. um, because then if we, if we see something in April, we can also talk about we have more time to prepare that message and get it right rather than who can be there tomorrow night and what are we going to say yeah. so uh, i'm okay with all that um, I, I guess my question um has the city ever figured out what the set the other component represents in terms of money so you've got 23 million in for a branch library but there's another component to the feasibility study to get it up to the preferred level, which includes upgrades here in the, in the storefront, plus staffing, plus programming. Has a number ever been put on that second piece? No, but that's what we'll be working towards, you know, for the 24 budget. Yeah, but you're not going to put it all in the 24 budget, right? We'll probably... Yeah, we'll yeah. Well, you're, you're not going to put it all in the 24 budget, are you? I can hear you. <laughs> so my, my thought would be that uh, we would look at a phase of that phasing where we do it in one, one to three years and present that to you as a board to give comment on that's too, too, too long a time, too short a time, but to get your feedback on, on what, what we're thinking. Okay, well, um, yeah, I like that. I, you know, the, the point that I was trying to uh, put on the table is that if you don't know what that second component is, you don't know how disruptive it might be to a conversation on funding overall for the library. So if, if you identified it as like a million bucks a year, which I don't think it is, it would, I know it was more then, than 80. Uh, that, then that's not going to be as disruptive to the voters as if it was $50 million, for instance. Right. So it, it would be good, I think, for the board and the city and everybody concerned to know what that second piece is uh, because we're going to, uh, hopefully, we're going to still push as a board for some kind of commitment from the city to the library to achieve that. The, the lower number was 880,000. So you're going back to the feasibility. Yeah, study. You're, yeah. You're just taking the 23 out of the feasibility studies money. And We're, we are going to come up with our own numbers, but just based on your question, it was like 880,000 to was it 2 million or something upper. I can't remember the upper number. It was a big number. Yeah. But and there, like you said, there's no way we're going to be able to get that in in one year. But we certainly need to have a plan for that. Yeah, well, they they actually built it in a feasibility study yes. over ten years. So yeah, I mean that that's reasonable for an organization to to challenge itself to do. It's just how you do it, whether you upfront load that, and what what that's going to mean to the community. And I think the other part of it is what can the library really do with its existing space right now? Um, you know, I think we could expand some hours, um, you know, but, but the, or the library is going to have to do programming outside of the library. And, and that's certainly an option. But there just is only so much space and so much programming that can be done here. And, and doing doing programming in other areas of town will help us know how successful the branches might be mm -hmm. you know there's the lashley street station we could be doing some things on mm -hmm. and um, isaac walton it has some time available there um, so there are other locations that the library could be doing things yeah 
I mean, to me, it's an interesting programming dynamic because if you say, well, by the time the, the voter initiative would pass, if it passes, and that you get your ducks in a row in order to start picking a site, constru constructing the site, putting the library, that could be two, three years down the road. So I would argue that you've got two, three years where you don't have a, a majority of city staff or library staff devoted necessarily to that, that you could spend doing some of these other initiatives. Right. Or you may find that in putting all that together, the library staff is fully engaged and you can't get to it until year four or five. Right. So I mean, it's, it's an issue. Yeah. I hope it's not three years because so I, I think if the voters want another branch, which it seems like they do, mm -hmm. we need to be moving quicker than that. Because mm -hmm. costs only go up as well. I know. Oh yeah. Yeah. Right. Good point. Sorry, Cindy. No, this is. It's kind of weird passing a mic. Well, it is. It is. And she <laughs> said she wanted to ramp it up 20 minutes ago, and I just kept rambling. So no. I'm, I'm sorry. Don't be sorry. I have an eye on the time. I'll cut, I'll cut us off if we need. <laughs> Um, but let's move on to the reports and information items. Uh, we've already discussed a fair amount of the budget, but if there's anything we missed, otherwise, John, you're up with monthly highlights. Yep, so, um, yeah, nothing nothing else on the budget. You're going to have to pass in the night. <laughs> <laughs> Shoot. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, nothing else on the budget as far as that's concerned. Um, the monthly highlights topic. Um, and, and I can more or less talk about this and I'll show you kind of what I have. It was in the packet, if you saw it, there was a PDF of kind of, uh, you know, some slides from a PowerPoint of, of some highlights. But what I um, would like to start doing um, starting this month and going forward is, is bringing some of these things back, which I think existed in previous board meetings, you know, some data, some information on library performance. I mean. You know, just I think you brought it up even in, in your email before the meeting about that. So, um, and for for those of you on, on well, for everyone, actually, I was going to say for everyone on Zoom, but let me um, let me just show you what I have here um, without. Um, you guys see that? Okay, where you are at. Okay. So I don't know. You know, don't get too hung up on the format here. I. Uh, I, I, I wanted to put something together and you know other months it might look different. I like to get something uniform though and one of my tech staff has some kind of platform where I can actually just kind of put some stuff in and, and it'll kind of make these dashboards which I, I like the idea of. Uh, but for now, I, I, I pieced together PowerPoints from various staff to, to give you some idea and really what I want to try to do is show you what we're doing in a month, not every single detail but just some highlights of what happened in the previous months. You can see a lot of library activity that you may or may not really know about. So that's what this is. Um, this is just, the, I just put the PDF version up here, but kind of going through really our departments, right? So children and teen, um, you know, th this is kind of uh, some of the stuff that went on this month, uh, or well, not this month, but in February, showing you some of the programs. Um, it's in your packet, so you, you can look through this in more detail. I don't want to go through everything in the interest of time for now. Um, but I'll point out a couple things where I think it's relevant. Um, uh, but a, a, as usual with children's and many public libraries, they're usually the busiest department. <laughs> Story time alone carries that, but then you know, there's always other stuff going on. Um, so a lot of stuff here. Um, some really good team programming going on, by the way, um, there, and then just getting into some some of the numbers you kind of see, um, you know, like the total number of programs that were done all over, and then the total attendance of these. So that, those are pretty good as far as participation in library mm -hmm. programs um, and what we're doing. Outreach, you know, the, um, of course, we have outreach, but but children's always does outreach, right? Because they do classroom visits and things, and that's a little bit different from what 
Lillian does with her outreach. Right. She also goes to schools, though, but hers are more for events. So you're going to see outreach numbers always in different areas. Uh, but that's really what this is here uh, for the school, so, um, or for children as it relates to schools. Generally, that's what that is. And then adult programs, um, uh, February is a, a good month as far as adult programming and attendance. There were two big programs in February. One was the film that was done earlier in the month, uh, that was done in the city council chambers. I actually went and called this is um, not who we are. And then there was a QA with the director and Carmen um, Rivera, sorry. Uh, with a, it was really kind of cool, like a, like a one movie film fest, <laughs> uh, right? Um, and, and there was, uh, like the shows here, almost 150 came to that. Um, many more registered, so that's really good attendance. And that often happens. Um, and then the other big thing was the garden fair. So you, you see in the lobby the seed library that we have, fully funded by the friends. Free seeds, you can come in and just get what you want. That starts off with a, a, an annual gardening fair, um, and that was, was huge. Uh, over 300 people were there. There were moments where there was a line out the door. It's a good problem to have, but it's also a learning experience to see how can we do this maybe differently, whether it's here or maybe somewhere else, but sort of to manage that a little bit better. I think there were still complaints about it. But I don't like the idea of people kind of having to wait to get in mm. uh, necessarily. Um, although maybe that's okay because then people see like what's going on in the way. So there's that. Um, all the other um, programming here you know, that went on in adults, and um, you see the a column here. One of the things I've asked my department has to do just because so many things. Well, pretty much a hundred percent of anything we do with programming that needs money comes from the friends which is something i think needs to change but for the moment i want to capture that and i also will report this to the friends because they're interested to know what is our money going towards yeah. um, i mean i think they know but this is a much better picture for that so there's that outreach um uh there's there's a million things that go on i don't really know how lillian does it um she's out there all the time um Somehow she's in two places at once, I think. Um, but she, she's got a lot of, of steady programs going of outreach, like recurring things. She goes to a Mexican market and just stands there, and people come, and she issues delivery cards on the spot. Most people don't know anything that's going on here. Um, I mean, it's like a brilliant idea to me. Um, she sends me, Lillian is, is his picture here, if you don't know her, and what you're seeing here is actually how she sends me her monthly reports, which are usually no less than like 25 or 30 slides, because she includes a lot of pictures, and, and I think that's really meaningful data. Her report that I didn't put here also, she hands out comment cards, and there's really good feedback on some of that. Um, and it was a little hard to kind of render here, but so that's what you have, and then you can see just the sheer amount of stuff that, that she's doing. And, and this is in the winter, like outreach is a little slower right now believe it or not. So um, this will even get busier. And there's, you know, Lillian does a lot of this, but she, we get a lot of staff um, that volunteer, well, they're not actually volunteering their time, but they're they're going to help her, volunteering in a way for Lillian, but they're coming to work and arranging schedules and everything, make, everyone makes it happen so Lillian can get support when she needs it, uh, in case you didn't know that. So that's, that's what I prepared. For this month, like I said, I, I want to kind of start doing this. And as I do more, you can kind of tell me what's meaningful or not. I I happen to think numbers are good, mm -hmm. but also, you know, feedback, whether it's anecdotal or pictures, you can really just see how people are interacting with this library. Um, it's, it's one thing to see it, and it's one thing to just sit here and talk about it. So that's my update there. Oh. So one of the first things that comes to my mind is I'm so glad that one of the budget requests is to expand that department because I would hate for that staff member to be burned out. Yep. Um, so I think that's maybe important for this board to keep in mind that we also want to, to work to prevent burnout as well. Is Lillian who also does the story time in the parks in the summer? Yes. She's amazing. I've only seen her dressed as a butterfly <laughs> so, for the children's story times. Um, 
Any questions for John? I'm just guessing at this point there's no baseline data against which to actually compare these numbers, or are you sort of starting to create your baseline here now with this work here? Um, I mean, I well, I'm not sure. Maybe I'm not quite understanding. Like, I guess it just sounds like she's doing so much great work. It would be awesome to say like we have 30 percent more, you know, Spanish speaking participants in our story time now, or, you know, to try and help maybe get the funding for this or even expand that department, okay. you know, is there, is okay. this the data you need for the base or do you, is there a way to compare this to something we already have, I guess. Is the I think that with, with, um, with her role being still new and just barely a year in, I mean, but I think we can, we sh I, now I understand what you're asking and yeah, to see like, are we seeing an increase in mm -hmm. that? And we have, so we need to track that, right? Because what she's doing is having, at least in one case, a direct impact, at least on attendance in, in story times that are in the library, mm -hmm. right? You know, so where, where attendance was one thing, and you can really say, like, well, because of our outreach at story time in the park, now we're getting, you know, five more kids every week. So, yeah. Yeah, it would just be great to highlight some of those successes yeah. to help with the funding. I'm someone who loves metrics and I love stories more than the numbers. I love the no stories sound, behind sorry. the numbers. No sound, sorry. Go ahead. I'm just, <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> I was gonna try and summarize. And... Oh, okay. Um, I was just saying I love this and I love that this dashboard idea of being able to measure progress and change over time I'm most interested in the stories behind the numbers and how these different pieces interconnect. Um, it would be really interesting to see over time, you know, is there a connection or a relationship between um, our outreach efforts and circulation in those different departments? Um, so, you know, it's great to hear it, you know, that, that it's already noticeably impacting attendance at our in-house programs. But are those individuals then checking out materials or engaging with other uh, services in the library? I'm just, I'm so appreciative. I did like a happy dance when I opened that PDF. <laughs> I just love seeing that glimpse inside the activities for the past month. Um, thank you for giving that to us. How did your kids react to that happy dance? <laughs> My cat, my kids react to anything. They're mortified that I even <laughs> exist and react. So yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, John. I I think that's great. And one thing that we had discussed briefly is possibly bringing back staff visits as well. Yes. Um. So for all of us, stay tuned for that. I also just to share my own opinion. I, I love both the quantitative and the qualitative measures because I think with libraries, of course, we need usage stats and so on. But so much of the value is beyond the numbers, um, so I really appreciate the pictures also. And, yeah, and I'll just, I, I mean, I want to echo that because while, while numbers are important to show, um, you know, what, what we as library professionals are always trying to get across and that we firmly believe is that we impact lives. And, and numbers don't show that. Stories show it. Um, and, and getting the real actual feedback and, and you know it can be it can be something just you know I someone really enjoyed something and they were just entertained or whatever and it could be another person that because they came to the library their lives were saved because they got a job because someone helped them that's what's meaningful and I think that's what gets votes honestly yeah, and I think that a successful program could be based on a high attendance, but also it could be two people with the interaction and the connections. Um, so I just want to make sure we don't ever fall into the fallacy of, of thinking that uh, attendance is uh, the only measure. Uh, any other comments or questions? Jimmy, should I be passing this to you for the Friends of the Library Liaison Update? <clears throat> I don't have a whole lot to say. The friends meet on Wednesday. Um, I did, uh, we had a very successful sale. Um, I don't know how much I need to report on that or what uh, what you already 
Maybe just the big numbers. It was about 10,000 that we brought in, which I want to say was a record um, amount of money, um, especially our, our opening day. Um, we shifted our timing a little bit, so normally we did the Thursday through Sunday, and this time we did um, the Wednesday through Saturday, and then did our breakdown on Sunday morning. And just that shift, I, I don't know, it just kind of shook things up. Um, our opening day, which was um, friends, members only, um, that was our biggest money maker uh, for the sale. And then I think it just made it easier for volunteers um, to break the, the setup down, not after having set the, um, the sale all day uh, to come in fresh the next morning. Um, what else do I have to share? Oh, okay. Yes. Um, we had one resignation from the Friends Board, so we are looking for a, another board member. Um, and then hopefully, um, you, you have shared these slides with Prudence or? Uh, not yet. Okay. Uh, well, up. so, well, I'm not going to. The, the, I won't be able to be at that friend's meeting because I had a previous commitment for this day a while ago. But I told Prudence that, but I didn't think to send the PDF, so I will send that. Okay. I just, I w actually wasn't sure, but now with your hair, you can kind of share what I said maybe. I just I thought I should to. present I it. I wanted to know. ask permission yeah. if yeah. you weren't going to be presenting it. No, I think I, I would exactly like that. But this is exactly the kind of information that they've been asking for. So they have told me. So I will send that to you. Yes. That's all I've got. Yeah, but if there are any questions or specific things that you want to know, I might know someone. Uh, no questions. Can I think the mic is in front of you and we still can't hear you. Okay. I said I don't have more to report, but if you have any specific questions, either about the sale or other friends' activities, I know they're planning a their annual uh, meeting members meeting for later in the spring and combining it with a volunteer thank you or volunteer acknowledgement appreciation um, piece so after Wednesday I might have a more robust report for next for April and then if you want to just oh yeah oh yeah <laughs> okay oh Scar can you hear me okay okay I'll, I'll speak loud. Um, so I, well, I was going to update uh, council tomorrow. We have our, um, we're going to be hearing the survey, but we already discussed that at length. Um, we did have our, um, our um, retreat, uh, the 10th and the 11th, and, um, and that was very productive. Um, we were able to, to have in-depth conversations around what our work plan, um, our goals and objectives and just making sure that our, you know, we're getting through that initial, the work plan that was created before I got in council, I think it was 2018. And um, just looking at how they progressed or how we've all progressed during the years. But the big focus, you know, of course it's the operational, that's that big overarching every, you know, with all of our departments. Um, but key things that we wanted to give attention to, housing, um, you know, getting that attainable and affordable housing for so residents or people who work in Longmont can afford to live in Longmont, and um, and you know, people who have kids and their kids grow up to have um, a secure place to stay. Um, ECE, early childhood education, that's that was another one that was on that 2018 work plan and. Um, you know, we're looking at how we can incorporate um, that, you know, you know, just the philosophy of um, birth to five, having that, that strong foundation, and how we can offer as a city support for um, empl employees specifically, was looking at employees. And, um, and we heard a little bit of presentation from the, uh, not at our retreat, but at another council session from the early childhood coalition and ideas they have to to create like a universal 
early childhood um, initiative for um, Boulder County and surrounding counties. Um, transportation, of course, there's going to be a lot of changes coming in with uh, multimodal. We're doing um, Vision Zero. Uh, that that whole, I guess it's not a program, it's kind of a philosophy or just a, a way of doing business where the focus is zero deaths um, through car accidents or through any kind of transportation accident. So a lot of it is how we do our infrastructure in the city where it's more pedestrian friendly and then bicyclists and then drivers. So it's really putting the safety measures around um, the pedestrians. Um, the other one, you know, 100% renewable energy by 20, I think the long-term one was 2050. We we're gonna get as close as we can to 2030. So we were talking about a myriad of, of, um, of items. But we did, and I found these very helpful. It's, I think you all did this, right? And I don't know if you all have a copy of this. Um, I don't know, I can pass that around. But um, just what are those aspirational ideas, looking at what is um, ongoing, what is essential, um, you know, all the way to, to foundational as far as what, what needs to be paid for and covered. So that was each, we got one of those from each department, public works, public safety, the museum, the golf courses, everything. So, um, so I thought those were pretty helpful for, for me as a council person looking at the whole picture and seeing where, where those priorities are. Are you able to send that out digitally since we can't see it? Um, yeah. Well, do I have, we, you have, he, uh, he is, I just had a paper copy. <laughs> That'd be great, thing. Uh-huh. Okay. Yep, and that's, that's all I have. Unless anyone has any questions for me. Questions for Susie? I have a uh, question, but it's not library related. Should I wait till after we're done? Uh, maybe just in the interest of time, if you don't mind. So, so I have, uh, it's not a uh, question, it's just a, uh, an observation that, um, and this, this might appeal to you, Catherine. This, this has a listing of things that the library um, desires to accomplish, and I haven't really studied it, of course, but I would add some kind of long-term stable funding to the list. Who made that document? John and I did. If you get a chance for a rewrite. In your Jeff, Jeff and John made it. Yeah. That, that wasn't the goal of that. It was really to share with council yeah, our current um, work, work efforts that we do, not about what we're trying to attain with the based on the feasibility study. And if you look at, um, you know, because we, have, we have ones for shared services, utilities and public works, public safety, um, yeah, the electric department, the water. I mean, we have one of these for every single um, department. So I think just having that itemized list of um, of just and, and it wasn't I know it does it doesn't get in depth um, I the public safety one was pretty pretty large but even then it didn't get to you know to as far as like specific numbers or budgeting it was just the, the, the central the core ideas that they're trying to uh, really that, like that has been a focus for the group yeah I, it's I thought it was very well, digestible. Well done. yes and I have a lot of these to digest so <laughs> so these numbers are the percentages is it percentage of expenditure of effort or labor or yeah. is it okay yeah. so yes. yeah so public safety organized in this regard time time so five percent of their time is dedicated to this ten percent of their time was dedicated to uh, significant community support work or urgent and critical needs. So. Cool. Well, thank you for sharing. Yeah. That's nice, nice as well. Uh, any other comments or questions for Susie? Great, let's move on then. Uh, library board comments. Right? 
Uh, let's talk about our next meeting. I, I would like to, maybe if we could confirm the date, but if we could also talk about format. Uh, I typically am a fan of hybrid because I think it allows more people to participate, but I also am recognizing the limitations in this room. And so I'm curious if we could hold a full in-person meeting next month. But let's talk about the date first. Uh, so third Monday, so I have that as April 17th. Anyone have any conflicts or any reason to, to rearrange that date? Don't do it for me. Um, I'm just in the middle of district negotiations, uh -oh. so we do have a meeting. And it's going to be, yeah, it's going to be budget. All right. So, RK. <laughs> yeah. And you need to go. <laughs> <laughs> I am on the team. <laughs> In the event we get out early, it starts at four. So in the event we get out early, I can come come by. That'd be great if, mm -hmm. if that works out. Yeah. Um, okay. Otherwise, then let's let's continue on April seventeenth, uh, seven o'clock. What do you what do you all think are Zoom attendees? Do you think this is one to attend? You'd be able to attend in person. Um. I currently don't have anything on my calendar, but I would also say that like things kind of happen too. So I'm not there right because my boss texted me yesterday that she probably has COVID. Mm -hmm. um, so I like wouldn't have been able to figure that out like a month ahead of time, yeah. if that makes sense. So like, yeah. I, I don't have any currently like scheduled conflict right now with that, but if someone were to text me out of nowhere, again, I probably wouldn't come in person. Um, so it just kind of like, I guess, like, barring anything happening, I will plan to be there in person, so. Yeah, and I just have childcare conflicts a lot of the time, so, yeah. you know, tonight my husband's gone and my parents are gone and my sister's gone, so this was the only way for me to participate also. So, you know, the, those things happen, but. Yeah, and I, I think the participation is the important part and mm -hmm. making sure we provide options for all to participate. Um, so I guess then uh, to keep a Zoom option, um, but hopefully we will be able to uh, to meet without it. Well, could I make we'll figure out something with mics. We can't keep out right. yeah. so, <laughs> so the suggestion I was could we go to the old board meeting? It's a smaller room. I mean, it's more congested, but you don't have the at the pass of the microphone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Speaking, of. Speaking of which, <laughs> at the moment, um, although this might be kind of fun to sit in there, it is stuffed full of prom-related clothing that's been donated. Oh. Um, that's a, another children's program. Yeah. Well, they're, they're organizing it. It's really a library effort to, to get stuff in that people who can't afford to buy that stuff can get mm -hmm. go to prom or anyway. So I don't know that that would happen next time. But what can happen in this room is more than one of these. So a, um, we'll, we'll make sure the technology is figured out so we're not an open mic night or whatever this <laughs> is All right, that'd be great. It's curious because in my classroom, just a single laptop will pick up everybody. Well, I don't know it, why it's different. It's the fan. Oh, the background fan is what John was saying. Yeah, I don't know. Um, okay, anything else regarding our next meeting? Other than that, can we just name the May meeting too? Because May gets so crazy. Yes, great idea. Um, okay, so I have that as May 15th. Hold on, I might be at a conference that day. That, that wouldn't be the third. Yeah, yeah. Because the first Monday is the Monday. Yeah. Okay. Um, there is a probability I'll miss the main meeting. Oh, your second to last one. <laughs> I'm, I'm just saying. This short time we're going to be used to our community. I'll know more next month. Would the 22nd be a better? No, if I go out, I'll be out. It'll be gone. Oh, okay. Okay, so I will definitely be out of town on the 15th. Um, I don't know if that's, if anyone else knows that already. You want to do it a week early? 
Yeah, I could do the 8th. I could do the 22nd. I don't know. Well, the other conference on the 22nd, but the 8th would work for me. Okay. I like the 8th. You are here the 8th? Mark and I can do the 8th. I, I cannot, but John can. I have Park and Rep work. Okay, the 2nd. So, yeah. Susie? I can do the 8th or the... I, actually, all of those are good for me. All right, then let's, let's move to do the 8th. Um, sounds like the majority of us will be here then. All right. Well, then I am us adjourning at 8.51. Very good. Thanks, all.